First off is Charles J. Yeah, just in case you ain't heard of me, they told me it was too late. But I promise that I'll be the first to speak. Most of these rappers, they fake. But you can't have your way to St. Burke here. Everybody said it won't be till they see smoke, then they realize they'd rather have turkey me. What it do, what it do. It's 903 Boxing. I'm your host, Charles J. Psych, man. Shout out to my audience. Shout out to those that's rocking with me. Yeah, we back in the kitchen. There's a whole lot of goddamn sauce in this pot, man. Let's get to the shit. <laughs> oh, let's get to the shit, boy. Uh, at this point, um, boxing, boxing fans, um... It just, it's just amazing because if boxing was so crooked, if it wasn't ran by so many crooks, if it wasn't so many biased as fans and so much um, obvious racism, which that's the beginning of boxing, but boxing could really be the number one sport. <laughs> it could, it could, and um, in my opinion, it should because. It's just nothing that excites. It just ain't nothing more exciting, bro. Listen, I get it. The Super Bowl, everybody and their mama. Uh, it, yeah, it's become the biggest shit. But boxing is the first sport, and it's it, it used to be the biggest sport for many, many years. But one thing boxing always show us, bro, when it's a big fight in boxing, bro, everybody watching it. Boxing just... It, it, it just, I'm telling you, my wife last night, she sounded like a diehard boxing fan. <laughs> she a casual, but, but I'm just telling you, I just got to be on Tank Davis. Tank, 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 Tank Davis. <laughs> uh, Tank Davis is the most dangerous fighter in boxing. Most dangerous fighter in boxing. Um, yeah, 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 I fucked around and went to a, a fight party. Um, I had a good goddamn time. Um... I just I just see the impact that Tank has on fans. It's different. Ain't nobody had this impact on fans since Mike Tyson. Floyd had that Floyd had a huge impact, but he was just from a from a from a just superior boxer, just and it was the money and the cause. You know, it was the fact that he was one of the most smartest fighters. And the cause and the clothes and all that there. That's the Tank got that Mike Tyson effect. Tank got that Mike Tyson effect. Nobody, uh, most fans don't expect for the fight to last long, but they they be just they don't care if it lasts in one round. They they not missing it. Um, I've said this before. If shit was real, well, if shit was really real, uh, Devin Haney wouldn't have got cheated, and he should be the face of it. That's just me. That's just me. It may sound biased, but Devin, I've watched him. He just want to be great. The boy went to Australia twice. He signed a straight. That was a slave deal he signed. But I just watched the sacrifices and where he come from. I think that, if you ask me, that should be the face of boxing. But um, outside of Devin, bro, um, when it comes to just one thing Devin don't have. I'm speaking from a want to be great, uh, a good kid, um... You know what I'm saying? He disciplined. Um, he he a dedicated Muslim. It's just certain things about his just character and everything. But when it comes to a just an all around, Tank Davis way more exciting. Tank Davis is just Tank Davis got that it factor, just all across the board, not just in the ring. Just he just got it. He just he got it. He just, he captivate fans in a way that I ain't seen nobody do this since Tyson. You know, I was speaking more from a moral perspective and, and just wanting to be great and should be appreciated when I come to, when I was saying Devin. But Tank is just, he brings stuff that Devin just don't have. And I must admit that shit. <laughs> Tank brings some shit that Devin don't bring. Uh, and I'm not just talking about po uh, devastating power. I'm just speaking just, 
it's just everything about Tank says he 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 should be the face of boxing, bro. But he's not. But he should be. People still trying to argue that Canelo, bro. Canelo don't bring nothing what Tank brings. Canelo ain't never been as exciting as Tank. Not five years ago. Not he ain't never been as exciting as Tank. There is no fighter that's exciting like Tank since since Mike Tyson. There has been no fighter that's more exciting than Tank Davis since Mike Tyson. The motherfucker exciting. Just everything, everything about Tank says superstar. It just, it, it, he just got that aura around him, bro. It, I can't explain it. I can't explain it enough. Tank has it, and I, I finally, I see why fans just. I'm telling you, bro. Fans, um. Tank can bring a lot of fans to the sport. He's just one of them kind of fighters that when even fans that don't even watch bot when you first see Tank, bro, you just gonna know you're seeing something different. Um, he a showman. Everything about Tank says superstar. Everything about him says just he he, he just he got that it factor. He just got it. He he just fucking got it. I'm telling you, I can't have to look over at my wife. God damn, baby. <laughs> it's like, everybody, I'm Tank got that effect. I mean, um, he got that effect, bro. It was a point in that fight where uh, I had to question my damn I said, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, but I've always said Tank is the shit in the ring. It's just certain things he's done outside the ring that I don't like. You know, like condoning, cheating, and just certain things that I don't like. But when Tank is in that ring, I'm I'm all I'm all ears, I'm all eyes, I'm tuned in. I know I'm looking at something very special. And I just had to say that uh, I would never let what I think about him outside the ring affect my opinion on him inside the ring. Tank Davis is the most dangerous fighter in boxing. And Tank Davis is the most exciting motherfucker we've seen since Mike Tyson. And I've I've said this way, I've said this uh, months ago. Tank Davis is better than Mike Tyson. I've said this shit. This ain't the first. He better. He better. Higher ring IQ, better defense, better. Just he better. He's better than Mike Tyson. I'm not gonna go so far as to say that Tank is the best fighter in the world. Uh, I still ain't changed my opinion on certain things, and I'm gonna get to that. I just had to let that be known, bro. Nobody brings uh, to boxing what Tank does, bro. Nobody bring fans to boxing like Tank. I ain't seen it. I have not seen a fighter bring fans to boxing like Tank. I ain't, I ain't seen it. And it ain't no promotional companies that's doing See, promotional companies are behind in a way to try to bring fans. They trying with Usyk, even though he don't get knockouts. They don't complain. They want him to be. Well, he's pound for pound. And, and all fans must, it must acknowledge that shit. I ain't none of that shit fucking with what Tank bring, bro. None of that shit. Because in a way, don't have defense. I keep telling you, mother. And, and Usyk don't get knockouts. Fatback Fury is sloppy and he drinks Slish Mouse liquor. It's a lot of shit you motherfuckers keep trying to put in front of our fighters to act like it's some better shit. There's no greater show in boxing. And I'm, I'm saying this. There is no greater show in boxing than Tank Davis. And I'm not acting like him being Frank Morton makes him a world beater. I do not think Tank is the best fighter in boxing. But he's the greatest fucking show in boxing. I, I, I'd i be lying if I say I wasn't extremely impressed. I'm extremely impressed. But let me get some shit off my chest. I'm going to get back to Tank. Because um, I'm not going to do no fucking three or four videos today. We're going to get all this shit in one go. I'm going to let you motherfuckers know everything I thought about yesterday. Um, I'm telling you, bro, I've been sleeping all day. Because Friday night, I got two hours of sleep. Yesterday, I was just busy all day long. So I've been sleeping all goddamn morning. Um, damn. Hell, I hadn't even looked at the time. I was 1.30. Anyway, um, Gary Antoine Russell. Highly disappointed. Um... You got exposed to me. You got exposed. Um, you got exposed a little bit when you fought Rancis Bartellamy. But, because I, I said, oh my God. And I know Rancis Bartellamy can't crack. But, 
I, I used to look at uh, Gary Antoine Russell almost as if he was invincible. Because I said, it's that I trusted your ring IQ too much. I thought, I thought you had a higher ring IQ than what you got. I said, this motherfucker's athletic. He comes straight for your head. He got devastating power. He's a southpaw. He's very strong. But it's ring IQ. I thought that was just going to take you to another level, and it was going to be too much. I am one of those that admit it. I said Gary Antoine Russell is a tougher fight for uh, Devin Haney than uh, Sabrina Matias because of his ring IQ, because of his athleticism. No, nah, Pimpin, you're too reckless. I'm telling you, bro, you starting to look like um, – a low budget Sean Porter, a low budget, a low budget Sean Porter. That is what you, cause Sean Porter was was dope. You are too reckless, too reckless. I, you don't your ring IQ. It is it's not what I thought it was, not what I thought it was. And I ain't I ain't saying I'm saying exposed because I thought you was so much better than that. I thought you was so. I said I said Gary Antoine Russell is the toughest style for Devin. Like I said, I thought your ring IQ was much higher. Um, it, it's just, you get hit way too easily. Bro, you keep your hands down. Like I said, um, and boy, I'm telling you, um, no, nah, I think, no, nah, bro, you're too reckless. And you know another thing? Uh, I'm, this is out the blue. I just got to say this. Um... Even though Matias don't really got defense like that, his high guard is – Gary Antoine, you be having your hands down walking forward, bro. That's why motherfucking steady hitting you across your – you get hit flush, flush. That's another thing. Um, who? Matias. Matias and Canelo both have great high guards. I mean really, really good high guards. Tank Davis high guard is the most it's the it's the most effective high guard in boxing. Tank Davis high guard is it is it's so tight. I, I just I, I he got the best high guard in boxing. His high guard is tight and effective. I always say even though Canelo ain't my top nothing, uh Canelo do got a good ass high guard. But Tanks is even better. And like I said, Matias got a good high guard. That's why a lot of them shots he catch with the gloves. Uh, Gary Antoine, no. Uh, you might, you might just need to go back to boxing, bro. Um, you're a pressure fighter, but you're too vulnerable. Um, no. No. I don't know if you beat Regis. Regis might knock you the fuck out. I don't know, since Devin beat Regis, we act like Regis can't crack us. <laughs> I'm just that. But I, I just was disappointed. And I'm going to say this. I'm a, I don't think shit of Poet. Poeo ain't that good, bro. Poeo is not that fucking good. Poeo is not that good, bro. He's decent. He's not that good. You wasn't supposed to lose. And you know, Matias lost. But that dude, Leon Paro, is better than Poeo. I'm not saying Leon Paro is just special or none of that. And yes, Matias, you should have won that fight, bro. But um, yeah, Gary Antoine, I ain't got much on you, bro. But just like I said, um, I think you let them promoters pump your head up too much with this Devin Haney shit. Cause they used you. They never promoted you in life. But boy, they was promoting you and Gary Russell Jr. just to try to shit on Devin. That's all that was about, bro. But you fell for it. Um, am I happy you lost now, nah, bro? But uh, I'm glad you learned, learned your lesson, bro. Uh, stop falling for the cameras. Stay out the cameras, bro. Stop. Stay out the cameras, bro, and focus on your craft. Stop trying to act like you chasing Devin and you always want to answer these Devin Haney questions. I would have loved it if you had at least said, why y'all keep asking me about Devin? What about these other fighters? Devin just got cheated. Why would I want to fight him coming off of um, some shit he just went through like that? You didn't do that. You are your brother. Like I said, Gary Russell Jr. talked about that fight as if it was a fair fight. Well, Devin made a lot of mistakes in it. And when I saw y'all do that, bro, you just look stupid, bro. And watch after you lost them same promoters. Now you can't even beg them for a conversation. So like I said, bro, they were just using you to try to shit on Devin, bro. I'm telling you what they did. Matias, um, I don't think you was exposed. 
Um, like I said, I think Gary Antoine Russell was exposed. I don't think Matias was exposed because you still put up a very good showing of yourself. Um, you wasn't exposed because we all knew you didn't have no defense. We know you don't care about defense, but we. Um, I don't think you was exposed, but cause you. You had some good uh, moments in the fight. You fought a dude that didn't want to lose. You fought a dude that didn't come to lose. He didn't want to lose. And he wasn't scared of you. He wasn't scared of you, bro. Um, and not only that, uh, the icing on the cake, well, he had a game plan for your ass. I told you, bro, you got... He did He did the shit. Holy, Holyfield was a master at it. I told Some dudes, you got to hit and hold. Hit him with a big ass shot and immediately clinch him to where he can't hit you. Holyfield did that shit with Tyson. He did it with a lot of fighter. It's very effective when you're dealing with a real pressure fighter. Hit his ass hard and grab him immediately. <laughs> Don't give him no time to hit you. Like that's what Paro did. And shocking enough, uh, Matias best punches that left hook. He can knock you the fuck out with it. His left hook is vicious and it's very accurate. Paro took that shit. Nah, that's why I say Matias wasn't exposed. It's just that I didn't think Paro had a chin like that. I knew Matias had a chin, but I got to be honest. I still give Matias somewhat credit because Matias do got a hell of a fucking chin. Paro can punch. Matias got a hell of a chin. Um... I think if you develop a jab, uh, Matias, you'll be you'll be much more dangerous. Um, don't think he was exposed. I just think, I think you didn't, this dude, Liam Paul tougher than I thought. Like I said, the reason why I'm saying Gary Antoine Russell, Poeo ain't that good. I've seen Poeo. He's not that good. He was not supposed to beat Gary Antoine. This dude, Liam Paul had a different kind of game plan. It's the game plan and he tougher than I thought. Um... I'm telling you, bro, uh, Isaac Cruz will knock Poeo ass the fuck out. I don't know if Isaac Cruz beat Paro. I think Paro is a better opponent than Poeo. I know I'm comparing Matias and Gary Antoine. And I'm telling you right now, Gary Antoine, if you fuck around and fight Matias, then your ass getting stopped. Because I'm just saying, I don't trust your chin. I trust Matias' chin. I do not trust your chin, bro. I do not trust your chin. I don't trust it. You're too reckless. You get hit too flush coming in. Um, just I don't trust you. I don't trust you. Um, that dude Paru, he pulled some shit out the bag. We didn't think he had. Um, Paru, Paru, tough. Paru, and I already knew Paru pack a good punch, but he never hurt Matias. Uh, that's what I thought. I thought. Paro's chances, same way with Frank. I thought your chance would be, bro, you got to hurt Matias to beat him. That's not what you did. You boxed very well. You kept your distance. And you clinched when you pulled. You have to clinch Matias. You have to use effective clinching. You have to hit his ass and clinch at times. And smother his work. Um, it was a hell of a fucking game plan. I just got to give you Australia, uh, you Aussies a, a shot. Y'all got good fighters, bro. Yeah, 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 way back to the Max Schmellens and shit. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, when Joe Lewis had to read. But anyway, uh, y'all got good fighters, bro. Um, yeah, I don't even like Tim Zoo, but that motherfucker a good fighter. Um, when Cam beat T.O. Fimo, bro, that wasn't no fluke. Um, it's just that when, that when Devin beat Cam, everybody wanted to act like Cam was never shit. But Cam beat T.O. Just don't ever forget that shit. Um, y'all got some good fighters, bro. Liam Paro is good. Liam Paro is not going to be easy work. Um, I think Liam, Liam Paro beats Tio Fima Lopez. Because I I think Matias is better than Tio. Matias lost, but he's still dangerous. Um, Still dangerous. But fighters ain't going to be as uh, hesitant no more. Fighters are not going to be as hesitant anymore. Uh, I think the fear factor is kind of gone. 
a, a little bit from Matias, but he's still dangerous to me. Everybody can't do what Paro did. Paro fought a completely different. Paro fought 12 rounds discipline, but not only that. This is what a lot of people don't want to talk about. When you fight Matias, you're going to go through some shit. Paro went through the fire and the storm because Matias, at a point, and he hurt, he hurt Paro, and I thought he was going to stop him at one point in the fight. But um, Paro just dug deep, bro. He didn't let, he never let uh, Matias overwhelm him. He refused to let Matias overwhelm him, and that was impressive. I am, I am extremely impressed with uh, Paro's performance. Ma Paro might not even be better than Matias. If if they have a rematch, I'd probably favor Matias. I don't know if you could do that again. I think you just had a hell of a night, bro. I don't know if you can do that against Matias again. Um, you just had a hell of a fucking game plan, and you stuck to that shit. It took a lot of mental toughness to go through what you went through and come out on top. That shit was impressive. That shit with Liam Paul, and I was never big on you. That shit was impressive, bro. That shit was very fucking impressive. Liam Paro is tough. He tough. But, yeah, I think you would beat a T.O. Um, oh, I think Richardson Hitchens will beat uh, Paro. Richardson Hitchens will beat you. Um, Jack Catterall uh, and Liam Paro would be very interesting. 140 is still stiff. It is stiff. It's stiff. Uh, even though Matias lost, I'm telling you, he ain't easy work for nobody. Um, he ain't no fucking easy work. Um, but you def Matias, you just gotta you gotta get that invincibility shit out your mind. And it probably you probably done been uh, it shit took you back to reality, bro. Uh, you just you just too aggressive, and sometimes you just think you can walk through. You have to. What I am disappointed in Matias, because I always wanted to know this, and this is why I always said, I said, man, it's going to be tough, but I think Devin beats him. I know Devin's adjustment game is much better. Devin makes adjustments, and he can do it on the fly. Matias, you didn't make enough adjustments. It's one thing to be a come forward, straight, straight um, come for your head fighter. You must make adjustments when that's not working, bro. You got to develop a jab. You have to do more. You can't expect for that shit to work on everybody. That's what disappointed me. Because you're not going to be great like that, bro. You're not going to be great thinking you can just walk through everybody and make everybody quit, bro. What about when they do some other shit and they got a jab in your face and they pivoting out and certain different shit? You have to make the right adjustment, bro. No adjustments. No adjustments. So you got to do something different, bro, because right now... It's going to be a lot of fighters think they got Matias style figured out. Uh, it's still going to be hard to beat you, bro. You have to make adjustments. Are you more than just a come forward fighter that throw a lot of punches and that has no defense? You do got a good high guard, though. But are, can you be more than that? Because what you are, it ain't enough. It ain't enough, Pimpin. Uh, You got to do some other shit. You got to learn some other shit. You, you got to do more, bro. I, I, that's that. That was the key to Matias I, I, that I wanted to see. I wanted to see what happens when what he does don't work. What adjustments will he make? What That's a part of being a great fighter. It's great that you fought in your country, bro. But if you're going to be a great fighter, you must learn how to make adjustments. You made no adjustments. Okay. So, uh, Matias... I, I still, because you still had very good moments. I don't think you was, I just don't think you was exposed because I already knew what your style was. I just think what was exposed, you just don't make adjustments. You just are who you are. Um, You got to develop a jab, bro. It'll, it'll make you much more dangerous. I like that you got fast feet. You get to them quick. You got to make adjustments, bro. <clears throat> Let's get back to the drum, but I hate that you lost in your country, though. Uh, <clears throat> I hate that for you, and I, I really hope you bounce back, bro. Uh, you definitely a good fighter. You definitely bring excitement to the sport. So I hope you bounce back. <clears throat> oh, let's get to the goddamn grits and gravy. 
David Benavidez. I, I, I just, I just want all of my followers. Just remember. Do you remember the time when we fell in love? Do you remember the time? Da -da -da. I, I know you motherfuckers remember, bro. I always, I just at this point, I'm just ninety some percent accurate. Most of the shit I say, <laughs> it definitely come back uh, completely accurate, bro. David Benavidez, um. And, and people ain't going to say it the way I'm going to say it. David Benavides was completely exposed. He won the fight. He dominated the fight, but you was exposed. Um, These are the reasons why, even though I don't think much of Canelo, I said Canelo would knock his ass out. No defense. A lot of shit. Um, but anyway, it, Exposed, yeah, I say that. I say that. It's certain things about you that was exposed. Everything I've said, it just it showed. My thing was, I thought Vostis was gonna lay down. I thought his age and retiring for three years and only coming back and fighting two tune-ups, I thought they would play a huge factor. I thought David Benavidez's youth would be too much. His output would be too much. No, Vosis, Vosis didn't get the memo. He didn't come to lay down. <sighs> David Benavidez, um... <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you, this is why I say you was exposed. After that fight at the press conference, the first shit you said was... <laughs> you definitely said, well, my power is... And it shocked you. You said, <laughs> you said Joe Power. It just, it just, it just wasn't what you thought it would be. <laughs> it wasn't the vibe. Not only that, bro. You kept the the entire press con post press conference. You kept saying, "Well, I'm just gonna go back to 168 because Canelo's there, and I want the titles and this and that." You went right back to Canelo. You trying to cash out, bro? I, I saw this. I've been saying it. you just want to cash out, bro. You don't want to fight Canelo to be great. You don't care about undisputed. You want payday. You want payday. I know that. You just another motherfucker that just want to check, bro. It ain't about being great. You finna suck up your whole stomach. You finna starve yourself just because it's gonna be hard to go back down to 168, pimpin'. So, uh, you finna, um, yeah, you finna do. It's gonna take a whole lot of shit. Um, talking about that's how you kept saying. If you listen, listen to that post fight press, it exposed you, bro. You talked way more about going back down to one sixty eight. You, I did you even ever say you? Uh, I, I want to fight better beef next. I don't even think you ever said that. Before the fight, y'all was talking about fighting Bivol. After that fight, bro, you wasn't as excited to fight Bivol. You want to go back down to one sixty eight and hope on that Canelo fight. You want a payday, bro, because even you and your team seen, bro, I've said this shit. If you really follow this sauce, I've always said it. I said David Benavidez has been fighting dudes way smaller than him, bro. The biggest dude that David Benavidez has ever fought is Caleb Plant, and you way bigger than him. That's why I was I was pissed off. Ah. I was pissed off with the boxing world and just how we let that shit ride. How you was able to fight Andre, bro. And that dude is a 54-pounder when you really talk. A 160, 54-pounder. And y'all waited till he was 37 to give him a title, a, a, a fucking huge opportunity and a pay-per-view fight. You waited till he was 37 years old. He was way too fucking small. When I seen Andre land them combinations and it did nothing to Benavidez, I said, bro, he's too fucking little. Soon as Benavidez learned, landed a right hand, Andre never recovered. That was a fight where size had everything to do with why you won, bro. It had nothing. You was not better than Andre. Even at 37 years old, you wasn't a better fighter than Andre. You was bigger and you was way too strong and he couldn't keep you off him. That shit matters in boxing, bro. When you are way bigger than somebody and you're stronger and he don't have no power to keep you off him, there's nothing you can do with him, bro. Don't matter how fucking skilled you is, bro. Andre couldn't keep him off him. Oh, but both is good. Like I said, bro, you beat David Lemieux. That's a 54-pounder, bro. 
You beat Kyron Davis, bro. That's a 54 pound. How many more 54 pounders should I keep naming? Shall I keep going? You been fighting smaller dudes, bro. And it ain't me trying to shit on you. This is why I never tried to fight for Benavidez to get the Canelo fight. You been beating up smaller dudes. That's all you've been calling out. But when David Morrell came at your neck and disrespected you, when Jamal disrespected you, you showed up at the fight trying to fight him because he's a 54-pounder. When David Morrell said you a hoe, you ain't never ran up on him. Why? Because he's just as big as you, and he's a one-punch knockout artist. Something you're not. I just want to make shit very goddamn clear. It ain't no hate, no smear campaign, but I'm telling it. Telling it like it is. I ain't gonna lie. I know, I know, I know. They think I'm crazy, baby. Telling it like it is. Anyway, uh, it's a reason, bro, why you're not excited to fight Morel. It's a difference. David Benavidez is an accumulation. He's not no one punch. Not It looked that way when he fighting a 54 pound. I always said David Benavidez ain't punching like that. David Morel is punching like that. How many dudes have Benavidez just put to sleep? He's not doing it. Morel will put you to sleep, bro. Your team know it. Your father know it. Your brother know it. Everybody know. David Morrell will knock David Benavidez the fuck out. Everybody know that. But you keep getting passes for fighting smaller dudes. I, kn I already knew, bro. I already knew. You going to 175, shit was going to change. You're not going to walk these dudes down and just run over dude because they're your size. You fighting, you finally fighting dudes. That, that dude was 10 years older than you, bro. And he gave you hell last night. You can try to say, well, Benavidez landed way more punches and he really dominated, bro. That dude gave you some problems. He put up a lot of resistance, and he showed how easy, and I've said this, bro, you get hit way too easy. That's why I always had Canelo knocking you out. Not because Canelo is the shit. Canelo, a great counterpuncher. And that high guard, bro, he was going to clip you. I had Canelo knocking you the fuck out because you have no defense. You know another thing? Let's talk because I've been saying these things while everybody crying. You know another thing? Stephen A had this motherfucker on first take, bro. You on a co-main. When the last time you seen a co-main fighter get put on first take? Stephen A been crying. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say a man ain't supposed to cry. Everybody been crying for you to get this Canelo shit. <laughs> I'm just telling you. But like I said, ain't nobody been talking about how you been getting away with fighting smaller fighters. Oh, but Devin Haney the weight bully, but he moved up to 140 and fought one of the most hardest punchers and put him on his ass and got no credit. No, no, no. Look at when David Benavidez moved up to 175. You never got one knockdown. And that dude ain't no puncher like that. Devin Haney moved up to 140 and fought one of the hardest punchers and put him on his ass and he ain't never been knocked down, but got no credit. It's a difference, bro. Devin went up and fought a world champion that motherfuckers were scared of, bro. You fought a dude that was coming out of retirement. It's a difference. So now, look at, like I said, look at how they shit on Devin, bro. Devin fight the tough fight. This Vos, this dude, you was supposed to run through him. You better. <laughs> oh, no. And I, I, I better be even ain't one of my favorite fighters. Uh, I think Bivol is the best at 175. Better be even knock you the fuck out. Anthony Yard will knock you the fuck out. It, but Yard done took a lot of punishment. But Yard got the power. He'll knock you out. He'll knock you out. Bilbo will box circles around you. And Bilbo will hurt you. So that's another thing they don't talk about. Bilbo can punch. He just ain't no knockout. Or he can punch. He'll hurt you. Bilbo will outbox you and hurt you, bro. And I think, like I said, it was exposed. And that's why I must get on your ass. See, I ain't, I, people thought I'd shit on Matias. And I, I let you have Matias, bro, you, you got to work on other shit, bro. You're not invincible. It's a lot of other shit. And I always had Devin beat you. And low-key, I think Richardson Hitchens beat you. I always kind of thought that. I always knew a boxer, bro, would give you major trouble. And you ain't just finna keep walking through motherfuckers, bro. 
You're not going to do it. I always said that. But it's David Benavidez that was exposed more than anybody last night. Because after that fight, you started talking about going back to 168. Yeah, because you feel like you bigger than them dudes down there, bro. You just, it's, it's, it's suspect. It is suspect. Who the fuck is David Benavidez when he can't overwhelm you? I've said enough. I've said what I've said. If you can't overwhelm a fighter, if you ain't bigger and stronger, bro, you are just a good B-plus fighter. You a B-plus fighter. Without size advantage, without strength advantage, without all that, with a motherfucker your size and your age, you just a B-plus fighter. You're not elite. You're not an A-level. You're not an A-plus. You're not that. You're a good B-plus fighter. Very good, but you're not elite elite. David Morrell is special. It's difference. It's a difference. David Morrell don't depend on being bigger than you. He don't depend on being strong. He got the ring IQ. It's certain things you did, though, Ben Benavidez, that I like. Them hooks to the body was beautiful. Uh, it's certain shit. You got a good jab. You just never been consistent with it. You abandon your jab in every fight. Anyway, on the Tank Davis. Tank just special, bro. Um, he took your heart. Frank Martin. Um, uh, <laughs> I was at the fight, but I'm telling you. Say, man, you motherfuckers talking that shit. Yeah, I got Tank winning, bro. It's dude, he fighting a bad boy, man. I'm telling these dudes. They all at the party. Yeah, everybody was like, nah, 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 nah. He ain't got nothing for Tank. I said, bro. Frank might hurt time. That was the whole story of that fight. I said, I said, bro, Frank can hurt him. That can change the fight. Frank can hurt him. And he athletic. I said he got decent good feet. All, I said all that shit and I was wrong. Bro, you ain't got shit for tank. You didn't have a, we used to say that shit, a BB thigh thigh. Yeah, yeah, you didn't have a BB thigh thigh for uh, old tank. Tank flushed you down the toilet. Flushed you, bro. Um, it was a point in that fight where I damn near bit the back of my tongue. Uh, it was <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was a point in that fight where I I started scratching the top of my shit and uh, in the back of my, in my mind, yeah, yeah, in the back of my mind, I said, I don't know, Shakur. No, 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 no. I damn. It was a point in that fight where I just said, ain't nobody gonna be tight, but. Realistically, though, I still got Shakira over you. I still got Dev. It's three fighters that uh, it's going to take to beat Tank. Devin, Shakira, or Boots. And that's if he was to move up to 47, which I don't know if he'd go that high, but he could. Tank can flush 140. Tank can flush 140. Um... Tank stops everything at 140. Like I said, uh, if Devin come back and he's the same, uh, I got Devin beating Tank. I got Shakur beating Tank. Uh, anything else at 140, Tank stops. It, it's going to take a, a, only, a puncher ain't going to be enough, bro. You got to be a boxer, bro. You got to be a pure fucking high ring IQ boxer to beat Tank. It's going to take that and it's going to take some more shit. I got Shakur and Devin beating them. Um, nobody else. Nobody else. Um, he took your heart, Frank. He took your mind first. I, I was shocked. Um, in the first round, Tank, Tank, Tank. Uh, <laughs> tank was walking them down like Michael Myers. From the first round. And Tank never does it. Tank did something. He don't, he don't do this. Tank in the first three rounds, he's very, he don't really, he not walking you down like that. Tank walked his ass down. Uh, Derrick James, you've been exposed again, bro. I'm not going to put this just on Frank. Derrick James, your game plan in the suspect, bro. Your fucking game plan, when it comes to the big stage, bro, because that shit count. 
Your game plan for Jamil fighting Canelo, trying to use his feet when Jamil really don't got very good educated feet like that. Yeah, he light on his feet, but he don't got very good educated feet. It's a difference, bro. Your game planning on the big nights, on the big stage is suspect, bro. I feel like, bro, no. Because we all saw it in the Earl Spence fight. Like I said, in the Jamel fight, it was exposed when he fought Canelo. And it was exposed last night, bro. Your game plan in is trash when it comes to the elite level. When you dealing with a top-notch fighter, bro, I don't trust your game plan in at this point. Yeah, when Frank is fighting Artem Nim, when he fighting Michelle Rivera, oh, the game plans was on point. You couldn't game plan for Tank. You didn't come up with the proper game plan. And moving and boxing is not what Frank should have done because that's not his identity, bro. That's not his identity, bro. So, like I said, bro, you've been exposed again, bro. Frank trying to move and box is not his shit. He don't have the ring IQ to do it. He don't have the feet to do it. He couldn't even pivot out. In the first round, he was against the fucking ropes. Bro, bro I was so disgusted. Tank walked your ass down. And Frank was bigger than Tank. Tank walked you down the entire fight, bro. He walked your ass down. I, at some point, I just was disgusted. Frank never pushed Tank back. In the entire fight, Tank was never on his back foot. Tank ain't never been that aggressive. Tank was a savage last night. Tank was a fucking savage. It ain't that Frank is an A-level fighter. It's how Tank beat him. Frank can crack. Tank didn't give a fuck about that shit. Tank walked his ass down. And what he was doing was he made you, he stressed you out early in the fight. You started panicking early in the fight. Um, He put mental pressure on you. You weren't prepared for that. It's the mental pressure. Tank was walking you down fast. Getting to you fast. Tank normally slowly walks you down. He's very much more strategic. He was putting mental pressure on you, bro. He was walk. I'm telling you something. Tank was walking down Frank. That's how Matias be walking. It. <laughs> how, how Matias be coming real fast. Tank was coming real fast. Frank had no. He didn't give you time to think. He gave you no time, and he exposed your feet work. All them little angles and them little circles. How you pivot? How you circle around fighters? You couldn't do that with Tank. Tank. Tank is the best fighter in boxing that couldn't ring off. It's a lot of things that I must give Tank. Tank is the most dangerous fighter in boxing. He's the most exciting. Um, he the Shushu is the most vicious. Shushu is the most vicious and the meanest fighter besides Terrence Crawford. Shushu is the most mean. Tank ain't mean like Shushu. It's a difference. Shushu mean. Now nah, you ain't that, but you're the most exciting. You're the most dangerous. And uh, you have the most effective, aggressive style in boxing. Tank Davis has the most effective, aggressive style in boxing. It's going to be hard to beat. Um, I've always said this, but I, I just got to reiterate. I've always said this about Tank. I trust your chin. I trust Tank Davis, his chin, bro. I trust his, I, I trust his fucking chin. Motherfucker can take a shot, bro. Because even though Frank was punching off the back foot and he wasn't really putting full extent on it, like when he is on the front foot, it's still times that Frank landed some good shot. Nothing. I watch him land flush shots on Tank and Tank shook that shit off and kept walking his ass down. It's shit like that that damn near made me bite the back of my tongue. And I said, I don't know, Shakur. I just don't know. I, I just don't know. But what brought me back to reality, I must say, I still got Shakur because Frank, we always have to be realistic. Frank put up a, a decent fight, and it was, Tank put on a, just a show. Tank put on a fucking masterclass show. It was just a show. He put on a show for diehards and for casual. It, it, was, just, it, was, it was just phenomenal, bro. I, I, I was just impressed on so many levels, but I must say, I can't just say you're going to beat Shakur and Devin just because Frank couldn't keep you off him. Frank couldn't keep you off him because he don't have the skills, for one. 
I was shocked. I was shocked that Tank didn't respect Frank's power. Tank had no respect for Frank's power. And Frank can punch. Frank punched harder than Shakira and Devin. But it's a difference. Um, It's a difference. Frank Morton hits harder than Devin and Shakur. But they're better. Shakur and Devin are better punchers. A prime example. Danny Garcia is a harder puncher than uh, Terrence Crawford. Everybody know that. Ter uh, Danny Garcia is, no, more, is more known of a puncher, and he's a harder puncher than Terrence Crawford. Danny Garcia couldn't hurt Earl Spence, though. Danny Garcia never hurt Earl Spence. Earl Spence beat the brakes off Danny. But Earl couldn't take Terrence Crawford shots. Why? Because even though Terrence Crawford is not a harder puncher than Danny, Danny left hook is more vicious than anything Terrence can throw. But Terrence Crawford is a better puncher. It's precise. It's shots you don't see. It's very fast. It's snappy. It's all. It's a difference. And that's Devin and Shakur. That's how Devin dropped Regis. It was a snapping ass shot. Even Regis said it's the shots you don't see, and it's so sharp. That shit. Uh, that shit. That shit can fuck you up. That's what I'm saying about Shakur. I don't know. If she, I, it's hard to say any fighter hurts Tank, but Shakur can hit a uh, Tank with more effective shots than what Frank landed. And Shakur throws combinations. It's them shots that you don't see. Uh, I believe Shakur and Devin will get uh, Tank's respect way more than what Frank did. Because Frank throwing one shot at a time, he don't have the ring IQ. Tank Tank knew that off the rip. In the first round, and that, that's why I said Tank fight, Tank fight like a fighter that got about 40 fights. That's why I say, bro, he ready right now for all the fights. He Experience played a huge, a, a huge factor. In the first round, he had Frank stretched out. Frank was... I ain't going to say he was panicking in the first round. Tank had him figured out. He was already, he was putting so much mental pressure on him. Frank didn't know what to do. Frank did not know what to do, and he couldn't stay off the ropes. Tank was on his fucking neck. But like I said, it's going to be a difference fighting a Shakur or a Devin because they have better, much better feet, much higher ring IQ, much better jab. Frank Morton jab was shit. I must say that a, a jab like Shakur's and Devin's, it's going to be a major problem. That level of skill, it's going to be a problem, bro. You can't walk through Shakur, bro. There is no way I can go off this Frank Morton performance and say you walk through Shakur. You don't walk through him. I'm worried. Because <laughs> I do like, I slightly like Shakur more than I like Tank. But I'm a little worried for Shakur. Shakur, um, I will say this. Shakur is phenomenal. And Shakur is arguably the best fighter in boxing. I keep saying it. When you really just look at it uh, outside of Terrence Crawford, outside of Boots, Shakur is damn near the best fighter in boxing. And matter of fact, Shakur is. Shakur is the most skilled, technical sound. Shakur is low-key the best fighter in boxing, bro. Low-key the best fighter in boxing. But being the best fighter, the, he's definitely the most skilled fighter in boxing. Shakur is definitely the most skilled fighter in boxing. And I keep saying it, bro. I think Shakur's defense is just as good. It's almost up there with the Flores and Pinnell Whitakers. His defense is that elite. It is that fucking elite. His defense is, is up there, bro, with Pinnell Whitaker and Floyd. And I'm telling you, he going to make Sh uh, Tank miss a lot, bro. He going to frustrate him. It's not going to be easy. But what I also must admit, Shakur to beat Tank, you're going to have to do more than what you've been doing. That little bounce out that you was doing against that, that should have never worked on Tank. You're going to have to go in your bag to beat Tank. Oh, but Tank going to have to go in his bag. I'm, dude, this is why that, that fight right there, bro, it, it must happen. They talking about that Loma Chinko. Tank going to walk through, through Loma. Tank going to walk through Loma because Loma can't fight on the back foot and everybody know it. They're going to say Loma was too small. When he hit Loma with that shit, it's over, bro. It is over. Now, I will say this. Loma will land more flush shots on Tank than what Frank did. Loma going to land some shit before he get his ass stopped. He don't have the defense. And that's nothing nobody ever talked about with Loma. Loma's defense is suspect. Suspect. Suspect, bro. Um, Tank is the baddest motherfucker on the planet when it comes to setting traps. Tank Davis, his, the way he said traps, it's on a level. Motherfucker different. 
Yeah, I, I, I guess I'm just giving Tank flat. It's just things I seen. I know Frank ain't no A-level fighter. I get it. Don't come in my... Oh, no, no, think you talking like Tank just be Shakur or something. No, 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 you talking like he just be Devin Haney or something. Frank ain't on that look. I get it, bro. But it's certain shit I saw in Tank, bro. Tank went to another level. Lad. And coming off a long lap. Tank went to another level. I never, I never in no prediction did I ever think Tank was going to walk through Frank like that. I don't, it's a lot of motherfuckers in boxing, bro. You just must admit it. Listen, it's things that Tank don't, <laughs> the do outside the ring that I don't like. But I must admit, bro, I never thought, I never thought Tank would walk through Frank like that. I never seen him coming out in the first round, having no respect, walking his ass down, and having the chin to take anything Frank can throw. I don't think none, I don't think no fighter at 140 can hurt Tank. The only fighter I think that can hurt Tank is a Boots. Nobody at 140 can. I don't think you hurt him. I don't think you hurt him, bro. I don't think uh, that motherfucker got a chin, bro. Tank Davis got a granite, solid, and I always knew this, but it just, I, I don't think them dudes can hurt him, bro. You can't, I don't, I don't see nobody at 140 hurting him. Uh, it, it convinced me even more, bro. You need to go to 140. I think you need to fight Shakur at 135 and move straight to 140. Yeah, all that too. No, bro. No. Uh, 140 is not too much. You need to go to 140 because you're great enough, bro. Uh, you limiting yourself by staying at 135. The only fight for you at 135, bro, is Shakur. It ain't long. You're going to walk. Loma don't even deserve a tank fight. Loma done lost three fights. Bro, can we stop this Loma shit? You know, and in Tank's defense, bro, you wasn't ready five years ago. They was trying to trick you up. You wasn't ready five years ago when Loma was in his prime and, and they was trying to get you to fight him. You wasn't ready. You probably still would have knocked his ass out, but you was way too green, bro. When they was trying to get you to fight Loma, you was too green. Um, Right now, bro, you... You knock out Loma, they're going to say he was too old. They're going to cry for him. And they might start hating you. The boxing world might turn on you for knocking out Loma. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. <sighs> motherfucker special. Tank. tank. It's going to take a lot to beat him, bro. It's not just the granite chin, bro. It's not just the great footwork. It's not the high ring IQ. It's not just the traps he set. Tank can also knock you the fuck out with either punt. It's it's the accuracy, it's the it's the it's the punch placement, it's the it's the shot selection. Tank Davis, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard. Like I said, if Devin come back and he the same, I still think Devin gonna beat him. But I'm more convinced that Shakur beats him, cause I trust Shakur defense more. But I still think Devin beats Tank. I still got Devin beating Tank if he's the same. If if he come back and he's not the same, bro, I, I just don't want to see him continue to fight much longer, bro. If he's not the same, bro, you took illegal damage. And I'm tired of motherfuckers acting like he didn't take illegal damage. And I'm tired of motherfuckers acting like it is a huge chance, bro, that Devin is not the same. But I do admire the fact Devin said after that fight, I can't wait to get back in the ring. And I love, that's why Devin my favorite fighter. I, I, I just don't know, bro. The whole world shitted on him for fucking being cheated. And he's still ready to fucking fight. And that, 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 that's just why I fuck with you. That's why I say fuck a lot of you fake motherfuckers. Because real shit never get acknowledged. Devin is the realest motherfucker in boxing, bro. And he gets shitted on the most. So that's why I say Devin should be the face of boxing. If shit was real. But with the way things is in box, there is no question, bro, why Tank it should not be on the face of all billboard. He should, they should be talking about Tank in the NFL, in the NBA. Everybody should be talking about Tank. Tank is way more spectacular. He is 10 times more spectacular than in a way than Canelo, than a goddamn Usyk. And I'm not, because all these fighters are on the top five pound for pound list. He is 10 times more exciting. But see, now all of a sudden, excitement don't matter. No, 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 no. Now y'all trust boxing when Usyk do it. But I thought boxing is boring. I thought we like knockouts. Tank is tank is 10 times more exciting than anybody in boxing. 
Like I said, Shushu and Abdullah right around the corner, but they still coming up. Right now, when it comes to world champions and, 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 and fighters that are fighting for world titles, Tank Davis is 10 times more exciting than all these fighters. And I think all fans agree on that. Bro, the impact that he has on fans, bro, when Tank fights the world watch, he got the it factor. I can't take that. Tank got that it factor. Everybody want to see him fight. Like I said, it's just mainstream uh, media not promoting him, bro. I, I keep saying it, bro. If Tank was, <laughs> if Mexicans had a fighter like Tank, I'm just imagine, bro, that it, it, he'd be bigger than anything in life. Bigger than anything in life, bro. Tank is way more better than all these other motherfuckers y'all keep trying to throw up in our face. Uh, Tank is the show. Um, yeah, I'm impressed, bro, but I still... You got to prove you can beat Shakur, though. And I, you know another thing I, I must say, though, because Tank do a lot of monkey shit out the ring. That's some things I just can't get past as far as personality. Tank... A lot of the reason why boxing ain't um, where it's at, uh, you had fought. Imagine if Tank was hungry. Imagine if Tank said right after the fight and grabbed a mic and, and, and after Jim Lambert or one of the mother gave him a mic, he said, you know what? Shakur, I'm knocking you the fuck out next. That's the fight. It ain't no other fight. Shakur, you next. And, and how about this? Devin, if you come back and get your win, defend your title, I'm knocking you off right after I knock off Shakur. I'm going for Shakur and Devin Haney neck. I'm putting both of you motherfuckers to sleep. Those are my next two fights. Don't ask me about nothing else. That should have set off boxing. That should have set boxing on fire. But you don't do it. You play bougie. You do that shit. You don't never after a fight say, this is who I'm going to fight next. You got the power to do it. You refuse to do it. So a lot of it's your fault. A lot of it's you. I just, I'm just beating who they put in front. I don't like that shit. So a lot of it is your fault, Tank. You could change boxing no more, bro, if you say it. I, these are the next three fights. And don't ask me about nothing else. I'm finna fight Shakura. I'm fighting Devin. And then I'm... You don't do it. You don't do it. You entertaining this Loma shit way more than that Shakura shit. You know, I done heard so many people... Uh, Tank versus uh, Loma is a huge fight. What kind of numbers do Loma do? Shakur is a way bigger name. And he in his prime, bro. How many of you motherfuckers really think Tank could get more credit for being Loma than being Shakur? They already say Loma's old and he's too small. You don't get no credit from beating a dude like that, bro. So, yeah. Had to be said. Tank, Tank though... You, nobody bring fans to boxing like you, though. Nobody, um, you start the show. You start the show. And like I said, bro, everything about you. What I, one of the things I admire the most about Tank, and I said this last night, I said Tank remind me of Floyd. Look at the way Tank act before a fight. Look at his demeanor in that locker room. Look at his demeanor when he getting interviewed before the fight. You wouldn't even think Tank finna fight. You wouldn't even think he finna put his life on the line and step inside a ring the way he be. He be smiling. He be Tank never looks nervous. Tank look like it, that's the same. Floyd used to be laughing and smile. That's Tank. Tank has no nervousness to him. He don't. He just he be locked in, bro. It's his calmness. It's, it's his focus. Everything. Tank has some of the greatest preparation in, in boxing when it comes to preparing for a fighter. And Frank, Frank slept on this when Tank said it at the press conference. He said, bro, I always watch uh, film study. Tank studied you, Frank. See, see, it, 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 it's not easy studying for Tank. It's not because Tank make adjustments on the fly. That's one thing. That's why I said, Shakur, you're going to have to go in your bag to beat him. You're going to have to do more than we've ever seen you do to beat Tank. Tank makes, makes adjustments after adjustments. Frank, no. He already had you figured out before you got in the ring. Tank already knew what he was going to do to you before he ever stepped in the goddamn ring. Completely exposed that shit. Derrick James, once again, like I said, bro, he exposed you too, bro. He exposed you, bro. And I don't want to hear none of that. You in the corner talking about, get off the ropes and this. No, bro, that game plan was shitty. You should have knew that Frank Morton is not capable of outboxing Tank, bro. 
So you can miss me with that bullshit. But um, once again, I, I, I'm 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 uh, disappointed uh, in Derrick James too. It ain't just Frank, bro. I look at the whole team. Um, this is what it is, bro. Uh, Frank. You had your biggest moment and you lost it. You got bullied by the smaller man. He bullied you. And he mentally made you, he made you question yourself. It Inside three rounds, bro. It went three rounds in the fight and he made you, you was mentally defeated. You were mentally defeated. By the fifth round, you were mentally and physically defeated. Bro, by the fourth, fifth round, I just kept saying, bro, I'm just waiting on him to get knocked out. I knew in the fourth round that you it was just a matter of time before he knocked you out. I knew the fight was over. Everybody and, and another thing I'm gonna say this about by and I'm just showing you, motherfucker, I got that sauce. I, I'm just I, at this point, I'm just damn near the king of sauce. I, I just think I'm just <laughs> I just damn near think. Listen, I keep hearing motherfuckers say, Well, you know, Frank did kind of expose Tank because he got a hit on the scorecard, and you see, see, if he can do that. Let me tell you, motherfucker, son, bro, just because you were hit on the score. See, Barrios was a hit on the score course more comfortably. He was he he kept his distance more. He was able to keep Tank off him more. Frank, you couldn't keep Tank off you. It don't matter that you're landing more punches. When I see a fighter steady setting more and more traps, you're getting more and more nervous. You was trying to get him off you type shit. You wasn't out pointing him and out boxing him. You were trying to get this motherfucker off you and you couldn't figure out how to do it. So you were just throwing punches. They wasn't educated enough. You wasn't controlling distance. It's a difference. Just because a fighter is out pointing somebody and, and got more of uh, throwing more punches, bro. It, you, Psychologically, I look at all, it's the psychological effect. I could tell that even though Frank is throwing more punches, even though he's ahead on the scorecards, he's not going to be able to keep Tank off him for 12 rounds. It was impossible. There, I knew that, and I knew you didn't have the ring IQ. And that's why Tank didn't care. He didn't care about being down because I know it ain't no way he making it through 12 rounds. It ain't no way. I'm already breaking him down. T Tank's so special because he broke you down, not just physically. Before he ever broke you down physically and hit you with that, it was the uppercut that really stopped you. It wasn't a punch that knocked you down. Right before that punch where he knocked you down, he hit you with the uppercut while you was against the rope. You was out on your feet. Then he hit you with the uh, with the with the with the left and dropped you. The uppercut was stopped you though. Uh, Tank was measuring that uppercut the the whole fight because I, I want to say that's the only uppercut he ever landed. He was measuring for that uppercut and that's what finished you. Tang mentally defeated you, and then he physically uh, stopped you. It was it was just a it was, it was a psychologically, bro. He just he broke you down every way you can break a fighter. He broke you down mentally, bro. He made you question yourself. In the third round, Frank Morgan was questioning his, his his ring IQ. He was he he was questioning everything about himself. So while everybody talking about he ahead on the scorecard, he was questioning himself though. It wasn't a comfortable lead, bro. It was uncomfortable as shit. I don't, I, I don't even think, <laughs> like, who want to be ahead on the scorecards, but you got a motherfucker coming for you, and he's mentally breaking you down, though. So, Frank Morton being ahead on the scorecards don't mean shit, because Frank, because Tank didn't care about being down on the cards. The whole point was to break him. And that's exactly what he did. This is 903 Boston. I'm your host, Charles J. With that, I'm out.